my friends so you know it's winding down the garden is not producing as much and today I'm going to harvest some cuca melons so that I can just munch on it and when I'm doing different things and have the kids try it since there are many of them And I'll be harvesting any chili peppers as well. And I love this temperature right now. It's things are doing great. Like my zinnias are just beautiful. It's so vibrant. Other plants that are attracting pollinators right now are the pineapple sage which are blooming in full force as well as chrysanthemums I have yellow purple this pinkish colored with the yellow center and um, a different shade of purplish pink they're so pretty so gorgeous I really love this color it's my absolute favorite mom color <laughs> in this um, in the garden here hi friends so this is my very prolific green bean yard long beans that I had this year it provided me with a lot of uh, vegetable and now it's time to cut it down it's truly dead dead and the good thing is I don't know if it's this still contains um, nitrogen in it but I'm gonna break this all down and throw it under my chili peppers because something's been eating my chili pepper plants um, my chili peppers so if I stick this brambly stuff there hopefully it'll keep it whatever the critter is from going into my pepper area and it'll also insulate the roots of the chili peppers so now I've taken down this side of green bean vines and kind of threw them over there to where the okra and the peppers are. So they'll just break down. Um, I'll step on it and stuff and break it down. And it'll insulate the soil. Here are all the cucumber melons that I collected so far. There's still probably half, this is just probably half of it. There's still probably about you know, double this in the in the vines in there. So I'm just gonna wait till they come out. Uh, wait till they mature, and then I'll harvest those. Hi friends. So I have tried a couple of these, uh, but this is the first time I grew it successfully. Um, last time I don't know if the seeds were because the seeds are really really tiny, and I didn't water it enough or something but this time I grew three plants and they grew like crazy so I have tried it when I harvested a couple before so here it is it looks like a little mini watermelon and I tasted it mm, it definitely has a crunch it's tangy very refreshing you could snack on it when you're walking around in the garden. Mmm. The kids will have fun eating it. You could throw this in salads um, because of the crunch. It's so delicious. It is a, it's called a cucumber melon or a sour gherkin. And however, it is um, in the curcubit family, which is a cucumber. So you could put this in salad along with the little cherry tomatoes it's delicious now guys look this is my sunflower seeds the sunflowers that volunteered themselves they are probably nine or ten feet tall um they volunteered themselves because I had a sunflower to the side here and um, some birds or something ate the seeds and dropped 
stuff the seeds over here so look at every single um, stalk has numerous flowers it's gonna be gorgeous when it opens it's already starting to open up as you can see right there there's a yellow right there it's gonna be beautiful I love it so much we need that here now in the fall season Hi friends, I have a Tulsi that vo volunteered itself over here. I was like, what is this? It looks like a mint or a basil. And I sniffed it and it's a Tulsi. It's very, very fragrant. I couldn't believe it. I didn't plant it here. That's fantastic. Let's get some of these weeds out of here. And over here, I've got that black nebula carrots. I probably have to thin them out, but <laughs> it's fantastic that it grew. Oops, I hope I didn't pull out any carrots. So it grew a little batch here. I'll harvest a few um, carrots and then I'm going to let some go to seed so that I can have more of this variety. As I only bought one packet of seeds of that variety. That makes me so happy. I have two plants that I didn't, I know I've not had success growing carrots and I had no idea I had a basil here, a Tulsi basil. I love it. Not to mention my sunflowers have opened up. Here's another one. There are about 14 volunteer branching, oops, sorry about that, branching sunflowers. Look at that and that. So pretty. I love the color. It's like a golden orangey brown, orangey yellow. So pretty. A lot of the nasturtiums volunteer themselves. This one's really pretty. It's like a salmony orange color. And yellows and orange, bright orange. Gorgeous. I forget what kind of uh, squash this is. It's not going to make it. It never did produce anything. It did have flowers. And it's so weird. The bottom is spiky, but the top is so fuzzy. And it's silvery gray. It's so pretty. Um, let me see if I can find the label. Nope. Anyway, it's not going to make it, but at least I've got some plants. I threw some papaya seeds and it's growing like crazy right there, but I know with the winter it's going to kill, it's going to die. Or at least I'll try to protect it this year. Oh wow, the Cosmos and the Zinnias are in full force right now. They are doing so well. I've been cutting the Zinnias and Cosmos and trying to let the seeds dry out so I can collect the seeds. Trying to let the blooms dry out. The sky is threatening rain or at least light rain here in SoCal and I don't believe it. If it's not dark dark then I don't believe that it's gonna rain um, it sprinkled a tiny bit and soon we're gonna have to start harvesting these milkweed seeds hi friends I was going to use my pump to pump some water out of my orange rain barrels that have 65 gallons each I have two of them but I can't pump the water out because I discovered a chrysalis. I believe this is a monarch butterfly chrysalis, so I don't want to disturb it. And they had several caterpillars that were here on this milkweed, so I'm assuming one of them became a chrysalis there. And who knows where the other ones are, but definitely I am drawing many of them to my garden and I'm so happy about that. Today's a great day to work outside so um, there aren't mosquitoes biting. It's not really overly hot so I sowed a bunch of seeds here 
So this is that row and that row and that row and that row. And I did two of the Napa cabbage and two pots of bok choy, uh, seeds of change. The rest are botanical interest. So let's look here at what I sowed. I sowed some seeds of change, bok choy, and I put several seeds in one pot and then I'm gonna divvy it out um, as soon as they start to grow about two inches tall into other pots and for different family members. I also sowed this, oh so um, let's cover this all over again. So the seeds of change bok choy, it's really gorgeous, organic, and I got that from Lowe's, and it's okay to sow August through September, and it's 45 to 50 days, so it's a great cool season crop, great for hot pots, and stir fries and all kinds of stuff soups and here is mustard mizuna I've, uh, I've had it before in hot pot and it's really good and you could saute it you can have soup in a soup form with it so so good 20 to 50 days heirloom and next I have King Richard leeks, frost tolerant, 75 days, and yeah, it'll, it'll, we love, I love leeks, it's like a mild flavor. Tokyo long white uh, bunching onion, love it, it is 65 days, and you know, you can grow these all year long. Practically just uh, succession sow them and I have this Cabbage Napa cabbage. I love it. It sounds so good cabbage One kilo <laughs> meaning it's gonna provide you with lots of uh, produce slow bolt It's frost tolerant 50 to 55 days so it's going to provide a lot and it's got a very clean taste great in soups and sauteed same same thing Chinese broccoli, Kailan, 60 to 70 days. I love these. They're so good. You um, primarily eat the stalks, but you also eat these leaves and florets. And then cauliflower snowball Y, 70 to 80 days. This will be the first time I grew, grew this type of um, cauliflower. Cauliflower at all. And it's the first time I will have grown Kailan. I've grown Rapini and um, I've, those are easy to grow. Um, for Napa cabbage, that'll be the first time I grew that. I have grown several. I have grown several Tokyo Long White onions, but um, I just threw it in the ground and the problem is uh, or in a pot. I just water it too hard and then it ends up um, dying sometimes. Um, I have some leeks growing currently since the spring. Um, they're kind of competing with each other so they're kind of small. I'm going to have to start harvesting one at a time or a few at a time. Mizuna, this will be the first time I grew it but I have eaten it before. It's delicious. Bok choy, I've grown it and I've eaten it before. Wonderful. It's great. I love how it's so succulent and it tastes so good. Hi friends. I just wanted to show you how it's nice to be neighborly. And my friends, uh, my neighbors have been so wonderful. This year they gave us three huge bags of peaches. And uh, in turn we gave them... Um, some Armenian cucumbers because we grew a ton and um, today they gave us some pineapple guavas and look what they wrote ripe when slightly squishy not when rock hard cut into quarters and eat the soft insides recipes on the internet so so sweet and it smells divine oh my gosh it smells so good 
So each of these fruit are about the palm of my hands. You see, they're humongous and they're so fragrant. Oh my gosh. So I grow some as well, but the problem is before I can get to them, they get eaten. So let me show you my tree. So earlier in the year they were eaten. I had blossoms everywhere and they did get eaten and then it grew a second batch of flowers and fruit and it looks like it is being eaten because there were quite a few on this branch here and now I only see a couple here, a couple there, a couple there, a couple there. So yes, something's going around eating them all. So I never get to have any on my fruit tree, which is quite productive. So it's really frustrating, but it's so wonderful that I finally got to taste it. All because I have some really awesome neighbors. So in kind, we've been washing, freeze dry, drying bay leaves and rosemary and lavender and mint and all kinds of stuff. Now the ones that look the best for me to give them are the freeze dried and triple washed bay leaves as well as the rosemary so and also some cucamelons so that's what I'm going to give them some unique things and I think they will appreciate it as I so absolutely appreciate the pineapple guavas as I've said many times before I usually cut so this is a really big very overgrown very mature basil African Nunum basil I believe and um, it's flowering and I just usually collect the, all the flowers and I throw them in the chicken coop to refresh the coop this the smell and that in, um, in turn uh, basically wards off pests so that hopefully there are fewer mites and things bothering my chickens and especially right now when they're starting to um, uh, molt their feathers so I'm gonna go ahead and cut all these including my pineapple sage right here and then I'm gonna collect the stems triple wash the, the stems and then collect the leaves and freeze dry them so that I can make teas out of them Hi friends, I'm preparing for chow mein tonight and these are the vegetables and I just realized that I'm serving a rainbow of colors. Eat the rainbows guys, it's very nutritious and has all kinds of different components and different colors. Look at all the blooms I am getting right now in the fall. These just volunteered themselves. The sunflowers and the nasturtiums. So gorgeous. Loving it. The strawberries are still going strong. And the Cosmos are doing fantastic. So these were called Candy Stripe Cosmos, but I wonder if they're the same as the Picati. So I'm not sure if anyone knows, let me know. Some of my newly sown crops are starting to pop up. So that one is Kailan, some Mizuna mustard, I'm excited for mustard.
the little bit of spice that it lends. Some bok choy and I think that's the Napa cabbage or basically it's the Chinese cabbage. So my son bought a warty, warty 30 pound pumpkin and um, he was using it for his photography class. He carved it out and um, he collected the seeds for me. I asked for them. At first I didn't want them, but um, I just found out that for a long time people did not like warty pumpkins or squashes because they were considered a mutation or a genetic defect of, of sorts. So they farmers would breed only smooth pumpkins and squashes and then recently when for the effect, the gory effect or the the gnarly effect of warts, warty squashes and pumpkins, they decided to breed more of these. So this was called the knucklehead pumpkin. So I collected the seeds and that way I can grow them for fun for carving pumpkins. And in here is one seed from a persimmon I just recently ate and I have been able to successfully grow persimmons so from seed so I'm, I'm just kind of letting them dry out because um, otherwise it stinks. I washed them three times but I don't know it just seems like it's taking a while to dry indoors so I'll just dry, dry it outdoors. So guys the white flies have been out here for months just flying around, landing on everything, and, you know, laying their eggs, and making little babies that are eating up different crops. And here are my brassicas. That's the main crop that they usually attack. So it's got nibbles everywhere. I already harvested some brassicas for my chickens to eat, but I know in here are, and when I did, I did that, I actually did see some of those little green uh, worms, um, caterpillars that they have, their offspring. So I just pluck this every so often, just take off some branches and I give it to the chickens, worm and all. So let's try to pluck off a whole branch here. I just snap it off and give it to the chickens. They love brassicas. Here are the ones growing in pots. This one didn't do too hot. I let them attack it and they basically ate, ate it and everything died off after that. But here are the other pots with the brassicas. And yeah, they're being eaten away by those um, white flies or whatever you call it. So one of the tasks I'm doing today is I've been waiting for a long time for the okra to keep growing and to grow bigger, but something's been eating my okras. Um, I was saving the okra heads so that I can reseed. Um, it's already too late to eat these okras, they're really old. Um, and it's too cold for them to keep producing. So I, something's been climbing in here and eating my okra heads, the okras. So let me show you. Here's an okra and there are all the seeds spilled out of it. So I'm just gonna harvest them and um, let them dry out in, indoors. And if it makes more seeds, it makes me seeds that I can grow next year. If not, it's no big deal. My chili peppers are doing really well and what I'm going to do is harvest it, harvest some of the chili peppers to bring in because I've been making stir fries. As you can see I was making some chow mein and I threw some chili peppers in there. I got carried away. I got a little hot for the kids. They did eat them but they did say there was some zing. <laughs> 
to it, some pep. So I'm just going to harvest what I can. Oh, that's a beautiful bell pepper. Right there and right there. Um, I just put this cardboard right against it. It's my mom's method. It kind of keeps it warm, keeps things away from digging in here because something has been digging in here for sure, eating up some of my peppers. I've lost a few crops, but anyway, what I'm gonna do is harvest some chili peppers, cut down these okra stalks that are tall, and harvest these for seeds, and then I'm gonna sow some seeds down below here. When I pulled down the green beans, I just threw all the shredded uh, the vines down there just to keep the stuff warm and keep things from crawling in here. I don't think they like it when there's something that they can get trapped in. So I like to throw viney things down here. It keeps the soil warm like mulch. So this is uh, the area around my enclosure and I, was, I stuck some sunflower seeds in there to grow for the late fall season and something came in here and just dug up this entire strip that I had put the seeds in. So suffice it to say nothing's going to grow here in the way of sunflowers. So I'm going to mound it back up. Um, just trying to keep things out of my enclosure where I have my garden space my vegetables. Right now, some basil, some chili peppers, some zinnias, and some greens. Quite frustrating. One thing to note is that it's pretty nice soil. It's nice and dark. It's broken down. It used to be wood chips, you know, big chunks, like there and there. And, you know, with all the rains and stuff, it has broken down and it looks beautiful. So, I don't know if I'm going to stick some more seeds in the ground. I haven't decided yet. Hi folks. So, I have all this Malabar spinach and it was climbing up my fruit trees. And I was worried that it would smother it out. But it's fine. It's They're nice and young and tender leaves. So, I'm harvesting the leaves and I'm going to triple wash them. And then I'm going to make a salad out of them tonight. Because this is a vining uh, vegetable, it doesn't tend to get very dirty. So um, it's up, it climbed up on the trees. So it's not down close to the ground. It doesn't have too many pests. Um, anything that was ripped or torn looking, it's because I tore it out, out off the branch um, when you're struggling with uh, something that vines it's attacking each other so I'm just kind of detangling it. So here are the seed pods they're purplish black and those are the mature ones and then the immature ones are green or white. Um, they have pinkish flowers so I'm going to harvest these so I can grow them next year or I can dye something out of it but it's pretty cool. So I threw the vines with some of the leaves, the ones that are older or whatnot, of the Malabar spinach into the chicken run, and the chickens are having at it, so it's wonderful. It's providing us food and our chickens. And it grows better in the later, hotter months, so we are getting a ton of Malabar spinach. Same with the mouse melons, the cucumber melons. They are slow growing and then all of a sudden they shoot out tons of leaves and vines and uh, make tons of cucumber melons late, late in the summer into the fall. Hi friends, this is the third washing and see how clear the water is? It was clearer-ish the first time around, just a little bit of dirt on the leaves. Definitely clear on the second and third. Um, and look at what just a few vines that were climbing my fruit tree gave me a whole container of food and um, these are good for your digestive system 
very fresh eating. The little leaves are tender, a little sour. It has a succulence to it because it holds water. And when you wash it, you'll understand why these can't be sold in the stores because it's quite delicate. It tears quite easily. But wonderful crop, provides a lot of food. Uh, my husband and I noticed anything that's vining, they tend to grow very, very well. And it must be just to the nature of things that vine. Uh, because that's the same with cucumelons, these morning glories, all kinds of things that grow in a vining way. As the season is getting um, to an end, coming to an end, it is still quite hot. It's 80 something. It's quite hot for me just being out here. But look at the smell of our spinach growing like crazy up my trellis that was holding my melons. And it was growing like crazy down here. And it was growing on my loquat tree and my Subel sapote tree. So I had to come rescue it and take the vines off of it. It's growing up my apple tree and my lemon, my citrus tree. So I do have to come in here and clean it some more, but it just goes to show you, you could get a lot of food from just a few crops. Now, if you don't want it to grow anymore, then you've got to get it at this stage because once those seeds become purple, that's when it's mature and it's going to make, it's going to drop a lot of seeds and make more the next year. But I don't mind, they're easy to pull out.